I've always been a skeptic when it comes to the supernatural. Ghost stories, haunted houses, and eerie legends held no sway over me. I attributed strange occurrences to mere coincidence, human psychology, or the power of suggestion. That was until the fateful night I spent in a house that shattered my skepticism and plunged me into the depths of the unexplainable. I was 26 at the time, a recent college graduate, and I prided myself on my rationality. But, as with many life-altering experiences, this one began with a seemingly innocent twist of fate. It was late October and the college town I called home was buzzing with excitement for Halloween. Friends had gathered to celebrate the occasion, and the party had reached its raucous peak. As the night wore on, the laughter, music, and clinking of glasses became a cacophony that threatened to consume my sanity. I decided to step outside, seeking a moment of respite from the chaos. The cool autumn air greeted me, and I wandered aimlessly through the darkened streets. That's when I saw it, looming in the distance like a shadowy sentinel of the night. The house had stood abandoned for as long as I could remember, a dilapidated relic of the past. It was rumored to be haunted, a place where the bravest dared not tread. I scoffed at the notion, dismissing it as superstition. However, as I approached the house, a strange curiosity overcame me. It was as if an invisible hand guided me toward the decaying threshold. My skepticism waned, replaced by a strange compulsion to explore the haunted house that had fascinated and frightened so many. With a deep breath, I pushed open the creaking door, and the heavy scent of mildew and decay washed over me. The dim moonlight filtered through cracked windows, casting eerie, elongated shadows on the crumbling wallpaper. As I moved deeper into the house, the floorboards groaned beneath my feet, echoing like a mournful choir. The air was thick with an oppressive silence that seemed to intensify as I delved further into the heart of the house. Each room held secrets of its own, forgotten remnants of lives that had once thrived within these walls. Dust-covered furniture, shattered glass, and faded photographs whispered of a time long past. I ascended a grand, spiral staircase that led to the upper floors, compelled by an inexplicable force. My footsteps seemed to echo through the hollow spaces, as if the house itself was watching and listening. The bedrooms I explored held no sinister surprises, but as I approached the end of the hallway, I found a door that stood slightly ajar. With a hesitant hand, I pushed the door open, revealing a room cloaked in darkness. It was the sort of darkness that swallowed all light and refused to yield. As my eyes adjusted to the obsidian void, I saw the outline of a bed, its twisted sheets billowing like a ghostly specter. I felt an unnatural chill seeping through my skin. Suddenly, the room filled with a dim, otherworldly light, emanating from an antique mirror that hung on the wall. It was a soft, ethereal glow that seemed to defy the laws of physics. My reflection in the mirror appeared distorted, as if it belonged to another dimension. As I stared into the mirror, an overwhelming sense of dread washed over me. My reflection began to change, contorting into a nightmarish visage. My eyes were hollow, and my face twisted into an expression of anguish and torment. It was as if the mirror revealed the darkest recesses of my soul, laying bare my innermost fears and insecurities. I stumbled back in terror, desperately trying to escape the room. The moment I stepped outside, the door slammed shut behind me, sealing the room with its malevolent secrets. Panic coursed through my veins as I realized that I was trapped in this haunted house, ensnared by forces beyond my comprehension. The house itself seemed to come alive, its very walls pulsating with an otherworldly energy. 
Whispers echoed through the corridors, faint at first, but growing in intensity. They were indistinct, the voices of the long-departed residents who now inhabited this cursed abode. Their words were maddening, a cacophony of despair and anguish that threatened to shatter my sanity. I frantically searched for an exit, but the doors and windows had all mysteriously vanished, replaced by solid walls of impenetrable darkness. I was trapped, a prisoner in a house that defied the laws of reality. The whispers grew louder, and the oppressive silence was now punctuated by the haunting laughter of unseen entities. As I wandered through the ever-shifting maze of the house, I stumbled upon a room unlike any other. It was a vast, dimly lit chamber, its walls adorned with sinister symbols and grotesque paintings that seemed to writhe and contort. In the center of the room stood a massive, ornate mirror, its frame adorned with macabre carvings. I approached the mirror with trepidation, fearing what I might see. As I gazed into its depths, my reflection once again twisted and distorted, revealing a gruesome tableau. I watched in horror as my own hand emerged from the mirror, reaching out to me with bony, skeletal fingers. I recoiled, but the mirror's reflection held me captive, and my hand emerged once more, followed by my arm, as if some malevolent force sought to drag me into the abyss beyond the glass. The mirror had become a portal to a nightmarish realm, and I was its unwilling traveler. With a final surge of strength, I tore myself away from the mirror's grasp and fled the accursed chamber. I had seen enough, felt enough, to know that I was in the presence of something beyond the comprehension of the living. This house was a gateway to a realm of nightmares, and I was caught in its grasp. As I continued to explore the shifting corridors of the haunted house, I came across more unsettling phenomena. Apparitions flickered in and out of existence, their mournful cries and tormented wails echoing through the endless hallways. These were the trapped souls of those who had perished within these walls, their restless spirits forever bound to this accursed place. Time lost its meaning in that malevolent house, and I could no longer discern between waking and dream. The whispers grew louder, their words becoming more distinct. They spoke of suffering, of torment, of a curse that had befallen this place. I could feel the malevolence of the house pressing down on me, a force that sought to crush my very soul. The walls closed in, and the rooms twisted and distorted, like a nightmarish labyrinth. I was lost in a never-ending nightmare, trapped in a house that defied the laws of reality. It was in one of the house's ever-changing rooms that I encountered a spirit, a spectral figure that materialized before me. It was a young woman, her eyes filled with sorrow and her voice a mournful whisper. She told me of the curse that bound her to this house, of the darkness that had consumed her and the other lost souls who wandered these haunted halls. With a voice filled with despair, she implored me to break the curse, to free the trapped spirits and bring an end to the torment that had plagued this house for centuries. She spoke of a ritual, a way to sever the ties that bound the living and the dead. I had no choice but to heed her words, for the house had become my prison, and the only way to escape was to confront the malevolent forces that held it in their thrall. With the spirit's guidance, I embarked on a harrowing journey through the house's ever-shifting corridors, collecting the items needed for the ritual. The ritual itself was a complex and terrifying ordeal, a battle of wills between the living and the dead. As I chanted the incantations and performed the sacred gestures, I could feel the house resisting, its dark energy surging against me. But I was determined to break the curse, to free the lost souls, and to escape the nightmarish house that had become my prison. With a final, desperate effort, I completed the ritual, 
and the house seemed to shudder and convulse in response. The very walls of the house groaned and creaked, as if in agony, and I watched in awe as the malevolent forces that had held it captive were banished. The oppressive darkness lifted, and the whispers that had plagued me fell silent. The spectral figures that had tormented me vanished, their mournful cries fading into nothingness. I stood in the now silent house, the air heavy with the weight of centuries of suffering. I had broken the curse, but at a great cost. The house had exacted a toll on my sanity, and I knew that I could never truly escape the memories of that night. With the curse lifted, the house began to crumble, its decaying structure disintegrating before my eyes. I fled from the collapsing nightmare, stumbling out into the cool, moonlit night. The haunted house was no more, reduced to a pile of rubble and dust. The malevolence that had once clung to its walls had been vanquished, and the lost souls that had wandered its halls were finally at rest. As I walked away from the ruins, I knew that I had experienced something beyond the realm of reason and logic. The haunting had been real, the curse had been broken, and the supernatural had left an indelible mark on my soul. I was no longer a skeptic, but a witness to the unexplainable. The memories of that night would forever haunt me, a reminder that the line between the living and the dead is thinner than we can ever imagine. I had spent a night in a haunted house, and it had changed me in ways I could never fully comprehend. The darkness and the whispers still lingered in the depths of my mind, a chilling reminder of the supernatural forces that could not be denied. And as I walked away from that place of nightmares, I knew that I would carry the memories of that fateful night with me for the rest of my days.